Welcome to episode 75 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, D.L., and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues, the Military. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time, and Dad represents the delivery, recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and then applying that to those around me. I'm taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many different topics and then applying that to liberty. But speaking is not enough. It's important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek out your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local libertarian city council candidate Jerry Rohrbach, known to many as Pastor Tubb, or just Tubb. Pastor Tubb, a father of three, shares the same vision that I do when it comes to communicating the message of liberty, and that is we need to prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for Season 3 of the Liberty Dad podcast is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Each episode will focus on one of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. I got the idea from the book Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll become more informed about how libertarians view the the military, and we'll also discuss a bill during the bill review. With that, let's dive right in. All right, welcome back. It's Tub and I again, and we are here today. We're going to be talking, uh, we're going on to the next issue in our 25 issues, um, uh, uh, 25 uh, libertarians on 25 issues, and today we're going to be talking about the military. So here's what it says in the book that we're going through. Remember, we are going through the book uh, Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. It says this, Our soldiers should be well-equipped to protect Americans in America. But that's it. We have soldiers in over 100 foreign countries. What if 100 countries had soldiers in America? Our excessive intervention in foreign countries' affairs creates resentment, attracts terrorism, and wastes hundreds of billions of dollars each year. So, let me lead this in by saying this. When you own yourself, you are free from another person's aggression. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if that aggression comes from a robber or uh, from a soldier from another country. And the best way to insist that others do not violate your freedom is to not violate it yourself. And furthermore, when world leaders um, and their governments involve themselves in the affairs of other countries... They strain potential relationships mm-hmm. between people in those countries who may otherwise prefer to associate. So military. Should we have this big, huge military in over 100 countries? No, no, no. Let, let me ask you this real quick, though. And maybe I'll jump way ahead of where we're supposed to be. But like when you said that, I'm thinking, uh, okay, so should – if we believe in this, we have this you don't get into me, I don't get onto you type of thing, which I'm cool with. Right. Do we then extend that out? Do we then take that same thinking to other countries where we go, you know what? We don't have a right to infringe on them. Mm-hmm. So does it hold the same principle? You know what I'm saying? I think so. Okay. All right. So that's what I was kind of wondering. Is this sitting in that same camp where we go, you know what? We don't want it for our country, but do we also look at it and go to other countries say, hey, do we take our beliefs with us across right. the border? Okay. I think so. Okay. So – so here, here's what I want to tell you, and this is why I actually mentioned before we got started. So this might actually, we might actually do this video in the right amount of time this week. Okay. Because I, I, I tend to fall into this libertarian thinking on this one. Okay. I, I tend to kind of fall in line with the idea that you, you know what I, I, I do believe in a strong military presence to protect us. Okay. I, I believe that the military's first responsibility should be how do we look out for Americans. Right. Okay. Now I, I know that. Oh, good Lord. I, I mean, I, I say this is going to be quick. But maybe it won't be um, because here's what I've said. And I've said this before. And maybe see if this Libertarians are takes, never quick. We're never quick. No. And I'm a pastor on top of that. It's never going to be quick. All right. So here's the thing. I, I, I have often said that um, I, I believe that as America, okay, our leadership, our military, um, if there is a country that what I refer to as in a civil war, mm-hmm. they're fighting amongst themselves, trying to figure out who their leader right. is going to be. I think we need to dip out of that. I yes. think we need to sit back, allow them to figure out what they're doing. And once they've established this new government that they wanted, that they wanted, not an American version right. or what we do, that once they've established that, that we can then go to that new government and say, hey, are we willing to work with each other? Right. Like, and, I, and, I, and I'm fine with that. I think that what's happening, I think why – our military runs into problems. I, I don't think that that's a principle that we follow. 
Right. I think we tend to insert ourselves sometimes when we probably ought not to be. Right. So as we travel down this road a little bit, does it come into the idea of American interests? Right. Now, let me ask you this. What do you see as American interests? Like, what should we be involved in? What's for our benefit as far as military goes? Uh, I think our benefit should be when effectively when we are attacked. Okay. Now, there might be some nuance in there, and we don't have to try to figure out all the nuance here. Oh, that's but, what we're here but, for. But, but we're, here to, okay. we're here to fix all, right. all of it. All right. Well, we got a time limit. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I, I think that um, what I tend to look at it, and I say, take everything about an individual, mm -hmm. how two individuals uh, are required to in, in interact. Right. Apply that to countries. So basically it scales, right? So for instance, um, let's say you're my neighbor. Okay. Um, I don't think I'm allowed in your neighborhood except right. for, for this, right? right. But go ahead. I, I don't necessarily have an interest in what you do on your property. Right. Now I might in the sense that, hey, if you've got a lot of, you know, yeah. you, you, you have un, unkept grass yep. and, on, you know, your, fall, your house is falling apart, mm -hmm. then it may reflect my, my right. home value. Yep. But that's too bad. Mm-hmm. Right, because the only way for me to fix that is to, to either convince you to do mm -hmm. something about it or to force you to do something right. about it. And if I can't convince you, then that's just too bad. Right, there is not. Right? So I, I, I apply that same logic okay. to countries. Hey, maybe this country is over here doing something and we would prefer them not to do it. Okay. We have one of two options. We can convince them or we can force them. Okay. Now, with force, also remember, force can be the threat of force. Okay. Which I is mean, why we, we have our military bullied. bases right. all over the place. Okay, and there's right? – right. So we have our military bases over, everywhere, um, and it's not entirely just for the threat of force. I mean there is some strategic use there and, because like, hey, if for some reason something pops off over here, we need to be able to deploy troops. I understand all that. Um, and, and, I'm, and I'm not necessarily opposed if we have a base in another country where there's a partnership. Okay. Right. And we say, hey, we're going to partner with you. You partner with us. And then, if for some reason we need to deploy, you know, to this particular but area, we have a little bit easier access. Let's take that same thinking along with what they're saying inside even the book. Is that okay? If if we say we're going to partner with you and you let us be there, we, and so are we open to then saying they go, hey, you know what? I don't trust Canada. So right. I really want to put some we people inside of the states of right. our military. And how would we right. be with that? And and I would say. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Okay. Right. But we don't that's not our policy. It's though. not our policy currently. And I say it should be. And and I say that's the only way. Like if we want to have troops in Germany, mm -hmm. Germany should be permitted to have a, an air a base in um in the US. So you're saying that's the contingencies. We'll do right. this, but so you're saying that becomes the trade off in all things. Yes. So let me ask you a question. Would you rather work out a program like that or say, you know what, forget all of them? We're all going to come back here. Well, I think it'd be best to have them have them all here. Okay. Yeah. So what? Yeah, but if what, we felt like there was some threat elsewhere, so like if we felt like some other countries were posing a threat, so for instance, we'll is just it take the that big bad wolf, trouble? right? Okay. The Let's threat. Just, one of them. We'll, we'll take okay. one of the one of the axes of evil, right? <laughs> okay. We'll take North Korea. Okay. Let's just assume for a moment that they actually had rockets that worked. <laughs> all right. They, and bless their hearts, they keep and, trying. All right, they keep trying. <laughs> uh -huh. Or let's just say that hey, they still don't have rockets that work. But man, they're getting better they're getting and better, better. Mm -hmm. right? And so we might say it might be strategic for us to be prepared to deploy there in the case that maybe, you know, let's say they're rattling their sabers and they're saying, we're going to build these rockets and we're going to shoot them over at Japan and right, right, everybody but, else in but the world. For, but for how long? And so I, I don't know. See, there's a problem because here's what I think. I think this is what we're running into. That's a legit argument. Right. That le this is what's just happening. Right. We got to be there ready. But do we say, okay, listen, it's been 12 years, 15 years. Right. When do we go? They're not really doing anything. Yeah. You know, how yeah. long do we stay camped right. out here, putting yeah. our people at risk? Right. And, and and my theoretical here okay. isn't based on what's going on today. Right. It's based on like its own separate theoretical. Like, let's just say mm -hmm. that there's a situation where we really do look at it and we say, it does look like they're. They're doing a little bit more than saber rattling. They are actually getting to the point where they might be able to do something. It may be wise for us to have some troops in the area. So then we contact South Korea and we say, hey, do you mind, whatever. And I know that there's, you know, like people could argue about, you know, the North and South Korea and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't, I, yeah, I'm we're not getting into that. That's not what this is about. All that. Right. I'm just yep. simply making a very simple argument saying, uh -huh. like, look, if we're going to have troops deployed somewhere, one, it needs to be um, – it, it needs to be partnership. 
So there is no, like, we're going to have troops here, end of story, too bad, which is the case, I think, in some areas. Mm -hmm. I don't know all the agreements that we have and everything. Um, but then, too, it really needs to be if we actually need them there. Th there's the, right? Okay, there's the question. And I think, Do we like actually said, need them there? And then like you said, what's the interest? We go there, let's say we go there in the year 2000, right? Mm -hmm. And in the year 2000, we, we put some troops over in South Korea. And then by the year 2020... North Korea is still in the same spot in, in every way that we can tell than, the, than they were in 2000. It's definitely probably long past due time to pull our troops out and say, okay. nothing's happening here. We'll come back if necessary if things change. And, see, and that, then we withdraw our troops and we bring them home. That's because, an idea you know, that I can get And if behind. South Korea, I mean, yeah, if South Korea said, hey, Canada's getting crazy, you know, they're, they're not only putting milk in a bag, they're putting like, Weapons in a bag. They're trying to send them over here, mm -hmm. right? We would like to have some troops over there to be at ready in case we need to. Then I think it would be, you know, somewhat appropriate. And you know what? I think that as Americans, that's so foreign. That concept is so right. foreign to us that I think that we might naturally go, no. Right. There's no way. There's no way we would do right. that. Right. And, like you're and and if we're if that's going to be our attitude, it needs to be consistent. We need it's to say, reciprocal. There's no way that we should have our troops. In somebody else's country. So, okay, so what do we do about the idea that we refer to as our interests? Because we say that we have now, now, because, okay, let's, okay, if we want to get rid of interests, because mm -hmm. that leaves, but that's what they work off of right, right. now. They work right. off of interests. Right. So let's work solely with allies. Like, this is our ally. So I'm an advocate of, okay, I, I think that as a whole, we tend to agree for most of us that Israel is an ally for us. Depends okay. on who you talk to. Exactly. But yeah, we'll go okay, with but we're going to keep out on that one for a second. So we're going to say that, okay, they're an ally for now. And, and we go, I, I think that we can sit back and go, hey, we don't have to be there. Right. I don't think we have to have people around there. I don't think we right. have to have, but I think that the world could know that's our boy. Sure. You mess with our boy, you're messing with us. Sure, sure. And don't you think that could be just as effective as some places go, dude, you know what? They could strike us pretty quick and they could hit us pretty hard. Right. That's enough reason for us not right. to mess with them. And, but So I don't understand why we don't take that type of thinking. Why do we not take, okay, we're good with each other, but I don't have to be right next door to you right. or in yours right. in order to protect you. I got you. a friend. His, his big thing is I like being a world superpower because when you're a world superpower, uh -huh. you um, – you have the benefit that people don't screwball with you or they screwball with you less. Right. So he's basically like, I would rather be the big guy in school than the little scrawny guy. But do you have to be the big guy there? Can, can, aren't we just as big and dangerous if we're here? I think so. I think it's Because it, it, you got to also keep in mind, I, I often talk to people and I say, you know what? Pretty much are going away the days of this combat where, where right. it's now it, it's all done remote, basically. Right, right. And so why do we even truly yep. have to be there? Now, l l let me... A ask you this, and it's funny that you started mentioning because I actually have something about that in my notes. Is the um, somebody has to be the leader, right? Somebody has to be the world. I'm kind of taking the other side of this yeah, for a yeah, second, yeah. okay? So somebody has to be the world leader. Somebody mm -hmm. has to be the, the police of the world. Do they? I think if not, do you run leader the risk? and police are two different things? Okay, but <clears throat> but I think that they, they kind of run in the same idea that I think police says if you do this, there's going to be problems here. I, I think leader says, hey, y'all leave it alone. You know, I think police says, hey, um, let's be caught. Remember, doing the other side of it here right. for a second, okay? So inside of that, somebody has to, if we want to get, if we don't want police, we go with leader. Mm -hmm. So somebody has to be the leader. Right. If not us, who? I don't have a problem with us being a leader. Okay. But I think that when we start getting into, um, uh, not leader, what was the other word you used? Police. Uh, police. Mm -hmm. When we start getting into the police, um, we get into the same problems that we, we have, have right now with, right now in mm -hmm. our own country with the police. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to travel down that route, but yes. I mean, okay. <clears throat> because think about it. What, is, what, is, what does it mean to be police right now when we think of it? It means to go and impose a particular type of order upon people that, uh, that may disagree with you know, that order. So, for instance, libertarians would largely agree that it's not really the police's job, and it should never be the police's job, to go and stop somebody from smoking some marijuana, right? How do libertarians? We always come back to marijuana. You ever notice that? Well, right. Well, all right. So anyway, we're all budding. We're all budding. <laughs> get it? Heads. Get it? Get it? Uh, get it? Dad joke. You'll dead, anyway, you'll edit that one out. So, you know, but I mean, if you think about it in those terms, you know, the same thing happens in countries. We say, okay, well, you're not allowed to do that. You shouldn't right, do that. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And those tend to be our interest. And in, 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 in what I mean by our interest, it's the same as policing. You know, police 
like, all right, well, they have a vested interest in drugs being illegal mm -hmm. because it gives them something to do, something to fight. <laughs> right. Right. And, it's and and I don't necessarily mean that it's a conscious thing, although I think for some it is. I think that what we don't realize is that there's a lot of unconscious um, things that are at play that kind of that are, that are motivations. Okay. And I think that there are – now, I think when you get to the global stage, I, I think there's a lot fewer um, – I, I think – for leaders, for the leaders, there's a lot fewer unconscious. It's more, it's more conscious. It's intentional. Mm -hmm. But I think that when we agree with the leaders, it we're we're we tend to agree on more unconscious terms. You know, like well, we've got to because if we don't, you know, it, 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 like there's this incentive inside of us to to agree with so, our world leaders. But the world leaders, they have a different motivation entirely, mm -hmm. right? And, but, and and I think that's where we need to be wise as citizens, and we need to say, okay, we get it. You've got some agenda that you're trying to figure out. You know, you want to put a pipeline through this country, and the country doesn't want it, or the people in this this village don't want it. So you're making up some BS reason to attack them, you know, mm -hmm. or or whatever, <clears throat> you know, whatever the case may be. So then we insert ourselves, right? So I think we insert ourselves, and that's and, and this is no. I'm sorry. I think we shouldn't. Should it? Oh, okay. Right, right, all right. All right. <laughs> I, I thought you were saying that, that's like what we do. Right, like, well, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Right. <laughs> Yes, that's okay. what we do. Uh -huh. um, but I think what we need, I think it all starts with the citizens, and I, th I think it all starts with us saying, first of all, how would I interact with Tub? Well, that's how I need to interact. That's how our country needs to interact with this country. Okay. And the reason is different. Like because, we handle all these differently based on well, I mean, who they are, you, what you, they. You, you you follow the same principle, but right. you apply it as it's appropriate for okay. that particular situation, right? And so, in the same way that I don't have the right to tell you how you manage your property, even though it may be affecting mine on the free market, right? Right. Um, on the market, let's just say. No, we don't want to go too far into free market. Right. Yes. Well, we don't want to, we don't want to, you know, lead people to believe that there is a free market. Right. Just market. <laughs> did we already cover that? We covered free right. markets, right? Right, right. Yeah, okay, all right. Uh, in the same way, it's not appropriate for us to tell another country, hey, the, you need to do this or you can't do this <clears throat> because it somehow impacts us. So, for instance, a good example would be telling China Say hey, as a, as a as a nation, mm -hmm. say hey, you can't pirate software, and if you do, we're going to impose something on you as a country, right? I don't think that's appropriate for us. Now, could Microsoft, like back in the day when Microsoft was really heavily pirated mm -hmm. over in their country, could they do things? Say hey, we're not going to send shipments over, or right? We're gonna, you know, we're going to exclude the the Chinese language, or I don't know, whatever, whatever mm -hmm. kind of things that they might come up with to try to combat it. Yeah, I think so because it's their property; they have the right to try to defend themselves against what they believe is unauthorized use. No, we're not getting into intellectual property. Uh, you know what's funny? Because I was just thinking that, I'm like, all right, wait, hang on. How do we? Because it seems like that's it, the direction I'm, we are going. I'm thinking, okay, no, we're, I'm we're military. An, no, I'm we're, using that as an example, right? Just because it's an easy one for for the a broader audience to understand. Because like most everybody's heard of pirating software and movies right. and stuff like that. So, so I'm just using that as an so example. So let me so, let me ask you to you keep know, those, that's an interest. Right, that would be an interest. That's for, an interest. But I think that here's the problem: is when we keep it at interest, it becomes very broad mm -hmm. and very wide, and it, and it gets us into problems. I think we probably don't need to be in. Right. Okay. Because so, we're trying to. Force a country to do let, something let, for our benefit. Let me ask you this then. Let's take the libertarian side. Let's say in this rose world that we have, mm -hmm. we this utopia that we're creating for libertarians. Right. What do you do with the military? So do you drag them all back home, set them up here? Do you reduce the military? Do you keep them all on staff here? In this, like what, what becomes their role? What becomes their purpose inside of the libertarian utopia? So I would think now my libertarian utopia may be a little different than others. No uh, way! I'm you mean the, libertarians aren't all going to come together with the same plan? Right. We all have a different utopia, Fair which okay. is which is why it's great that we are living in a. Um, uh, I should be quicker on this if I'm going to try to make jokes. It's mm -hmm. not going to work if I'm trying to make jokes. Scrap the joke. A simulation. <laughs> if we're living in a simulation, then we all have our own simulation. Okay. Anyway, that joke that's is what, dead. that's what that's what you're battling yeah, for. That's what I was <laughs> like. It's, it's, you know, I, my brain right. is not yet working, okay. functioning. So, but uh, no, I would look at it and I would say, um, you know, we, 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 we look at it and we say, uh, we need to have some sort of military capability. Okay. And we look at it and we say, first of all, uh, military, 
It is a volunteer organization, purely volunteer. Yep. Not this pretend wannabe volunteer system that we have now where it's like, all right, well, you have to sign this paper saying that you're willing to <laughs> join the military. Which? Willing to be drafted or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. The, so I, I, you know, scrap that. That needs to go. Period. We don't need to add women to it. We need to remove it. Do you know what's funny? Is that, service. like, like, yeah, like I look at that, and I know it gets brought up different times, and that to me it's a non-issue because it's so, it's so unlikely. You know what I'm saying? Maybe right. in my world, I don't make a big deal out of it. Right. I mean, it's not like I'm in agreement with it, but I just go uh, to me. Right. Who cares? But I because think we, I mean, we we basically have a volunteer army now. Yeah. Right. And then, so I think that we we pull all our troops back. We only put out troops as is necessary, right? So we've got okay, put them out where Saudi Arabia start acting up and they're threatening us, maybe or okay. But hang on, you jumped ahead of me. I'm saying in the meantime, right? In the meantime, okay, I get if something oh, what's our pops off, we got to So oh. when they're here, wait, okay. So when we have no oh. other presence in the world, what do we do with our military? Do we downsize them? Do we keep them? I here? think like, what I, happens. I, I think we can downsize. Um, okay, I think there's any number of different things you you could do. And I don't necessarily have the best idea. That's right. But I think you could downsize them. I think you could. Um, do you default them back to the you states? Could, you to the you National default, Guard, you, stuff you like that. Default it back to the National Guard. Okay. You could say, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have cyclical training, where kind of similar to how organizations will have like their chair and maybe the secretary voted in one year, but then the vice chair and the treasurer in another year. You know, they're opposite years. So you could actually have you know, a fuller group, but where you only have particular, like one group on duty training at a time. And so like, hey, odd number of years, the, you know, group A is training and then they go and do their own thing on even number of years and even So basically years. everybody becomes a reserve unit. Right, right. I mean, basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, so you, so you, you there's, like we, we really cut back our full-time military. Correct. In that sense. Right. Uh, but like I said, we can. But everybody's trained on a fairly regular basis. basis. So they're not entirely. So let me ask you a question then. Do we keep funding them in their time where they're not in training? Like how, how do we, because so that will become an issue. Right. So if we're now, this again falls in the, which libertarian utopia are we talking about? If we're in the libertarian utopia, the more minarchist, and by minarchist, I mean somebody who believes in a very, very small government, like it's this big now, but I'm talking about like maybe this big, uh-huh. right? Really, yeah. really, really tiny. Yep. And so maybe we're only we're only funding um, support services like fire and police and uh, EMS, okay. and then also a military. So, I mean, we're, we're pretty bare bones, yes. right? Yes. So if we're if we're funding a military, one we're, we're, we're we got a lot less funding going on to begin with, mm-hmm. so that's obviously a good thing. But then two, when we bring people back, right, we don't have to pay nearly as many people. So the people that we do have to pay um, are 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 fewer in numbers, and so the cost of the military, the cost of maintaining that right. military. Mm-hmm dramatically drops because we're not trying to fund the fullness of everybody all at the same time. This is, again, just going by one off-the-cuff idea. Right, yeah, yeah. If we get something cyclical, right? And this is, of course, also considering, you know, the idea that, hey, we're maintaining some level of taxation for, for the, for the bo- most bare bare bones, but purposes. but ultimately that number could stay the same because you don't ha- you can say okay we're going to have X amount of hundred thousand people right this year okay right. but it's going to be next year it's just going to be a different group right. but that amount stays right. the same and you yep. can keep that budget the same based on the fact of you go okay we're we're going to have so many of this rank so many of this right. rank and so that never changes right okay but I think you have to have some level of always in office you have to have some form of leaders inside of there it's minimal again sure sure um, yeah but but what I'm getting at then I yeah, guess you can have some general and some like I think you have to have these yeah, yeah exactly like you have to have these inside a place so if we start looking at it then like I, I listen I, I mention people all the time because you know it's always the conversation of well can we just can a state secede from the country and stuff like that I says well listen I says technically they have the means there they already have every state has a military with their national guard right and, and so do we then start saying hey listen let's kick the military mm-hmm. as a whole back to the states Let's keep each state. You keep X amount of people that you want, that you can afford stuff along those lines. That becomes your national guard. Right. And then we ultimately just activate them. Right. Into service so that we never have this central military. But we have 50 of them. If you think if you want to think of it that way. Yeah. I mean, and 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 that's another idea. I mean, there's any number of. Yeah, let's go go a thousand different directions. And and I would be comfortable with 
We're, let's we're, talk about something. I'm always, I always like the conversation. It, right? of like, like, how do we on the table? Let's talk about that. What is what makes sense? What are we trying to? Somebody's gonna watch right? this. Go, Tub, you're an idiot. That, because, here's why this wouldn't work. I go, okay, that's great, but let's start a conversation. I mean, so you know, it's funny that people would say that because they're always like, oh, that wouldn't work. No idea would work before it's implemented. We gotta try something. Like right? my thing is Every, always try something. If it doesn't work. If go do something if different. If we had the idea that you just presented right now, mm-hmm. if we had an idea where there was no centralized military. Right. And but there was a centralized governing uh, body that could reach out to the different states and say, hey, we're activating, we, we're X activating troops now because we're, you know, we're having a problem. You know, Canada's getting up. Uh, ca- yeah. You know, we got to go and take we got to go and take over and get that bag of milk. So <laughs> if that happens, if that's the situation that we're in and then somebody were to go, what if we just had a full time standing army that was national? Somebody would go, that dude, that wouldn't work. Except for... Right. Yeah, like, yeah there's it, always going to be something. You can always say that about an idea me, hey, that's not let, implemented. Okay, let me ask you a question. Right? Okay, hang on, hang on. Like, is uh, that how it's how Hang on, hang on. Listen, okay, so take this idea then. So imagine we have individual 50 states, no central military. Okay. Okay, so say something pops off. Could each state then determine, I think this is a bad idea. And could they go, you know what, this is our army for Florida. We're not sending them. I think so. Like, do you understand like what that could turn into? Because it's no longer something that people sitting in Washington get to go, we're going to send these ones off because we have our right. own interests anymore. Nah, uh right. Because now each state, I like states' rights. Um, so right. each state can state go, autonomy. yeah, go, you know what? No, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But we're not on board for this. I, I would be okay with that. L- like, uh, like, Because guess what? It would be a lot harder to have another Vietnam. Yep. Because when the states could go, nope, dude, we're like, another Afghanistan. <laughs> I mean, I don't know all the wars. I'm not very like like I don't know if you ever heard the name Scott Horton. I have. Okay, how so, have I heard that though? So he, I, I don't, I've not read any of his books. I'm okay. sorry if he ever watches. Do you there. think he's all in on this I'm, podcast? He, I, 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 I like to think that everybody everybody's all in on this. Even though I look at my <laughs> everybody's numbers, watching this like twenty, and I'm like. It's See, all the, one of them could be Scott Orr. It's, it's the 20 guys that have a bazillion, uh, you know, uh, their, people following Their them, reach is unbelievable. Right, yes. you know, uh-huh. like uh-huh. all the big dogs. It's all the big dogs watching. No, yeah, we don't, um, none of the little people watch us, right, only the right, big right. ones. So, yeah. Um, but he, my understanding from just listening to him, you know, some videos of him and mm-hmm. just kind of hearing, he is the go, the libertarian go-to when it comes to foreign policy. Like this guy okay. knows his stuff. He's crazy. He's like, really, and he just did a debate with I think Bill Crystal. Oh, uh, okay. yeah, a a, a a Soho Forum debate mm-hmm. up in New York um, on the military. I didn't watch it again. Sorry, he's he's never going to tune in again. No, he's out. Right? He's, you like, lost he's like, he's like, read my books. You didn't watch my debate. You're now Why am I watching you? He, he's done with your podcast, dude. So, okay. Um, so, but he is the go-to on this, and he can like name all the wars, and he can tell you like why they're all problematic, and you know, okay. I mean, he's like he, he's just like like a That's... historian type, you know, just guru this. I just know a handful of them, so I can. But I can tell you, like Vietnam, and more currently Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. And just imagine if the, uh, the you know the government said we need to go to Afghanistan, and then Florida and Texas and some of your bigger um, ones, you go. know, some of the bigger ones were yeah. like, yeah, you know what, the evidence that you're presenting is not convincing. Or better yet, because we're talking about Afghanistan, right? So let's say we do go to war. Let's say the, the evidence appears to us at the time that, yep, we definitely got to go in here. They totally attacked us, blah, blah, right, blah, right. whatever. You know, so we go in there and then we find out later that, hey, you know what? Um, things aren't going the way that they're supposed to be going. Um, or the information isn't what we were, were, what we thought it was mm-hmm. or wasn't what we were told, whatever the case may be. Right. But we find out later that some, then tech, a Texas or a Florida could say, you know what, bring our troops back because um, this isn't what we signed up for. for. And guess this what is, changes at You're that taking point. too long. Yep. You're not producing results. And the reason that we went in there isn't even a good reason to begin with. So – like, like that could actually right. shorten wars. Check, check this Dude, out. We then. just figured. That's what you're saying. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Because okay, so if we individual states this, mm-hmm. okay, our biggest issue is taxes, right. and we believe that we'll pay taxes based on what we approve of. Right. Like I, I agree to pay to this, not because right. you force me anymore. So can imagine now, fifty individual little armies. Well, just for phrasing. Right. Okay. So now we have those, and guess what? Each state could say. Each state could say, "Hey, um, we're only paying X amount of dollars for our military," right. and that's something the people can really push back on. Now they go, mm-hmm. "Hey, we're only allowed." so many soldiers out of Florida. Right. Okay, for, or whatever branch you want to go right. to. And so guess what? Now they can start saying, uh, no, no, no. We now have control here mm-hmm. about how much we're going to spend towards military. Right. It, it, it's no longer kickback up to Washington where they tell us right. what they're going to spend. So now each state can start saying, hey, you know what? Um, like Wyoming can go, we need four. 
Right. Uh, you know, like, let's, right. you know, like, hey, we need four military people to cover. This. We're good. Right. You know, you know so they get to then decide at that point, and it's not kicking money up to the federal right. saying, okay, now pay for all of this where it gets out of hand. Right. Now Florida can go. This is what we need because biggest thing is us. It's right. what we want. And so now you start thinking about this. This is it brings taxes back to where if right. we want if. We, I know we're not going to get into the taxes, sure, sure, sure. but it brings it back to where we have a little more control over it. Right. Because, listen, military spending is big. $700 plus billion dollars in 2020 on go. the military budget. Uh, I, I, I went and looked it up, and I was trying to find a good solid number, and I saw like several different ones, like 720, 725, 768. 700, so I was like, 700 is right, enough. So mm-hmm. everybody at least agrees it's more than 700. And seven hundred billion B. is a lot. It's a B. I uh, like billion. Now I know in our spending right now in this country, that if it's right. a B in front of, we don't even think about it right, anymore. Right, right. <laughs> oh, so dude, don't worry crazy. about that. So, but that's that's just insane. And and so I have a question right, right here. Yep. What could we have spent to get the same results? And I think that's the question that we never ask. We never look at it and say, is it possible that we could have spent six hundred, five hundred, four hundred billion and gotten the same same results, results? Mm-hmm. or even better? Right, like, 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 what did we get for seven hundred? You know, what we got who, who, who Yelp we got a lot. Of, we got a lot of lost um, sons and daughters, mm-hmm. brothers, sisters, yep. husbands. Wives, and and, and, and you know what I hate about this is right now there's a time of there are people that we know specifically who have gone over and served there and during that time, and, and they and, and they had this level of defeat on them. Right, even though they had no control of, they're already out. Right. But and it would get rid of some of that. And, and I always try to tell them to do it's not your fault. Right, like you, you weren't there. You know, it's right. it's not it's not on you. Right. but it would get rid of some of that also. Right. is some of this idea because of all of this that we're spending. Right, like and, said, and, what else could we do with and, that? And, and that doesn't even account for. I, I think doesn't even account for medical costs. For people when they come back, come back. Right, they mm-hmm. come back. They've got PTSD. They've lost some limbs. They've you know whatever they, they're they're injured and they have to have you know additional care after the fact um you know so there's, there's I, I think the cost is astronomical i mean i think that number that's probably, yeah that's, probably, that's, that's an astronomical that, that's probably, number that's probably just referring to parts and people right yeah you know, so that's probably right. not referring to treatment and stuff along those right. lines right i don't know i didn't look into it maybe it does but so I, we I did have you did have to re- have right. to research for this have to, uh, i okay. did i did so but here's our, here's our, here's what i think our problem is mm-hmm. because to get to libertarian utopia we have to undo thinking Correct. And let me tell you something. I have had this conversation with people, and some people have gotten rather angry with me. I wasn't trying to. I was just asking the question. Right. And here's what often tends to be said. This is what we do. And I go, okay, why do we do this? They're like, they'll tell you, well, our ships have to be over here, and they have to have so many people on them, and they have to have all these around the world. And I'm like, why? Right. And you know what's funny? So many times, I'm talking about people who have been in the military for a long time and stuff. They don't have the answers to right. why. Right. Here's what happens. This is what we do. Right. And you start thinking about this. Like, we could have a thousand ideas. Right. And the first thing we have to do is get people to start thinking about why. Right. Why do why do we just send these people over and fight a war right. for 20 years and, and yep. not get anything out of it? Yep. Why do we think we have to have all of these military members in these other countries? Yep. And, and I think that we have to first address, as libertarians, we have to first address the why. Right. And, and what I mean by why is, is it maybe be... That annoying four-year-old. Mm-hmm. You know those four-year-olds? Why? Why? I don't yet, Why? but I will. Why? <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> and so um, so they keep asking us, and all you want to do is shut up. Don't worry about why. Right. I, I think that we've lost an art there. I right. think there we have that to, as adults, tell them to, shut tell up. Them to shut up. Yes, oh, there okay. is a way more of that. Um, but what I'm getting, I, I won't be. Sorry, peaceful parenting. I was going to say, I won't be on the peaceful parenting one. <laughs> but no, what I'm getting at, though, is we, we need to have this level of why. Like, we have to start asking why? Right. Why is this happening? Why do they do that? Why? Right. Do, and, and you know what's funny is that the more you poke at why, the less answers they really get. Yeah. And then the more they start going, yeah, I think why? We can, I think we can add. So I love, there's seven words that you can use, and they're phenomenal. Should and I write this, this down? No. Well, you'll remember it. Okay. So I, I tend to think that, again, what works at the micro level really works at the macro level. Okay. You just need to adjust it uh, to fit accordingly, right? Six cookies versus 600 cookies. Right. Okay. So I look at it and I say, okay, well, you know, have you ever call up a business and you're trying to get something and, and, and you're like, man, I wonder if I could get like a little bit better deal. I wonder if you could, you know. So I don't what, know what that's like at all. <laughs> so, so what I ask is I say, is that the best you can do? Seven words. Is that the best you can do? And now, now um, you know, I'm counting this out. Like yeah, he's like, all right, okay, got it. Fact all right, yeah, right? <laughs> independent fact checker said you're right. Um, so I, you know, I, and, and I did this one time at Lowe's. Uh, there was a problem. They, they, 
I was running into some problems that they were that that was their fault, mm-hmm. and so then the guy was trying to compensate me, and I was just I just threw it out there. I was like, "Is that the best you can do?" And he's like, "Well, I guess I could comp you this other this other piece of wood." So, so you say it like, again? How many times? Do you, how many times do you say that? Do you, do you say it like six times? That's the so, best you can do. So all right, and, and he's giving and, you twelve bucks to walk out with what you and, wanted. And, and the beauty of that particular question is what it does is it it, it kind of puts on the person to to find a way like, can you? What's the best you can do for me? And they're like, well, what's the best I can do? Yeah. Right? Like because that almost be makes me feel like they're yeah. yes. Uh-huh. And I feel I feel like with the military, with these kind of things, we can rather than just why, 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 say, is that the best we can do? Dude, is seven hundred billion that's, that's, the best we can do? Just because you really? churched it up a little bit with is this the best you could do? Why is that different? Okay, you know what? Here's seven words for you okay. of the way I did it. Why, 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 why? Like, like it's the same premise. You just made it sound better. Right. But I think you're right. I think that here's what we're doing. As we continue on with libertarianism, right. just the two of us, you know, because we're, we're making this last forever. Right. All right. So as we continue. We're the only with, true ones with, anyway. Exactly. So as we continue down this libertarian road, we have a lot of explaining to do. Yeah. But once again, I'm finding that I, I, I don't think the military is any different than a number of these other topics. No. If we just start saying, Get away from what you're used to. Right. And I think that once we can get people away from, this is how we do it, and we right. can get them into this area of, well, wait a minute. We never really stop to think about right. why is this. I think that libertarians can become very effective, military, some of these other topics right. that we have, if we just start saying, let's not accept right. this is how we do it. Absolutely. And since we want to start wrapping this up, I, I think – Going along what you just said, one of the things that we can do, and listen up, libertarians, and hopefully if there's non-libertarians, because we're breaking it down. This is we're, we're dropping wisdom here, we're dropping bombs, right? Like you know, no, no not going. No, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm dropping wisdom. He's dropping bombs. Uh-oh. All right. Uh, so you know, like in the very beginning, I was talking about like you know owning yourself and you're free from somebody mm-hmm. else's aggression, and it doesn't matter whether it's a robber breaking in your house or a soldier from another country. And I think one of the things that libertarians can do is kind of go back to the basics and say, what are the basics of libertarianism as I understand them, mm-hmm. and then kind of break that down and say, okay, do you understand how this basic idea works? Yeah, yeah, you, you should be free from you know a robber coming out. Well, shouldn't I be free from a soldier coming over to my house, some other soldier from some other country? Should we had an amendment about that? And then and then, no, from another country. <laughs> Uh-huh. I should be free from ha- having to worry about, or I should be free from the aggression of some soldier from some other country. Mm-hmm. Well, what's the best way to make that? Make sure that that doesn't happen. Make sure that another soldier doesn't feel the need to come over to my house. Don't go to his house, right? Like that's the best way to make that happen. And in and so I think that the way that we do this is we we ask questions that invite people to uh, to be part of the the solution, right? You know, uh, is that the best you can do? And then, or just why, 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 why. you know, and uh-huh. say, hey, why, 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 <laughs> why, 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 and, and, why? And just mommy and daddy them into it. Yes, yes. And then, um, you know, and, and then relate to these bigger issues, these macro issues, how they really are a reflection of these micro issues. Mm-hmm. And I think people instinctively, not instinctively, but I think they can be easily um, persuaded to see that, oh, yeah. It really does work that way. If we can pull up a smaller step. level, we could probably pull because, up the bigger level. Yeah, because people are always – I think the biggest disconnect is people think that it's a big topic. So therefore, it, it, it's got to have these – It, it can't have be a simple solution. Ideas. It's got to be huge. Like, and I'm yes. like, yeah, actually it can be a lot simpler than yes. that. Now, the way we apply it may be complex, but the actual solution in itself, mm-hmm. you know, the, the rationale, the reasoning behind it is actually quite simple. And I think that's what we need to do. We, just need, to, we need to express that. Final words. So, let's be willing to ask why. Okay. So, we're going to ask why, 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 why. If that doesn't work. Try. Is that the best that you can do? Is that the best you can do? Is that the best that you can do? Or, in in this case, is that the best we can do? Right? So, when we're talking about the budget, is that the best we can do? You don't think we could do that for $500 Work them down. Wait a minute. Hold on. Negotiate. Hold on. Hold on. on. Here's the problem here. You just looked at me and said, last words. And then you started talking I mean, I'm the host. Uh Oh, It is Liberty Dad, and my picture's not right, there. Right. So inside, I do of need that, to get a picture of you in there. Actually, you did have one. I, I, I was. Did you some, not do? I had some. Dude, that's not on there this time. I didn't even think about I, that. I, I, we'll, we'll no, I don't want it now. I don't want it now. All right. So in, yeah, inside of it, I, I, I think that I think that if we just continue the same discussion, uh, not wait till you see the why? picture for this week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I just, I, I want. I, here's what I want. I guess that 
the simple answer for military and how do we do things, stuff like that. And how, because remember, our point in this is not just what you and I think, it's what kind of libertarians can do. Because I think that there are certain things that we can implement in many ways, like you mm -hmm. said. But mm -hmm. I also think that we can sit down in agreement on things like this is our desired outcome. How do we get there? Right. And, and so I think that we have to be open as libertarians ourselves. Um, in fact, we were just, oh, here I go. So we were just doing a uh, Bible study last night. And we were talking about like um, you teach and you learn with an open heart and an open mind. Right. That you're willing to listen to. I, I think that if we say, hey, here's where we want to be, let's start talking. Right. And all I think that a lot of what we're doing inside of these podcasts is let's start talking. Right. Here's some ideas. Um, you might tell me, hey, Tub, this doesn't work because, but. Right. And you, like, I love those conversations. I love the conversation to say, hey, we don't know exactly how we're going to get there, but let's start talking. Yeah. Once ideas start start flowing, you start going, okay, wait a minute, this works. Right. And you can throw this and you can throw that in. And I think that that what we need to be about, what libertarians need to be about on topics like this or many of the other ones, let's start a conversation. Yep. And let's start a, start a conversation of asking, is that the best that you can do? All right. And with that, it's time for a bill review. But I know I'll be a law someday, at least I hope and pray that I will. But today I am still just a bill. All right, so we're back with a bill review, and today we are going to be reviewing uh, Florida Senate Bill 734 or House Bill 6009. And I'm actually going to be reading from uh, the House Bill 6009, uh, and they're both basically the same bill. So let's take a quick read over this news article that I found, and it says Florida law today allows broad powers to demand citizens receive medical attention during a pandemic. Stop recording. All right, so we're back with a bill review, and today we are going to be reviewing uh, Florida Senate Bill 734 or House Bill 6009. And I'm actually going to be reading from uh, the House Bill 6009, uh, and they're both basically the same bill. So let's take a quick read over this news article that I found, and it says Florida law today allows broad powers to demand citizens receive medical attention during a pandemic. That includes ordering an individual to be examined, tested, vaccinated, treated, isolated, or quarantined, quarantined for communicable diseases that have significant morbidity or mortality and present a severe danger to public health. Individuals who are unable or unwilling to be examined, tested, vaccinated, or treated for reasons of health, religion, or conscience may be sub subjected to isolation or quarantine. So that's a news article. I will post that in the show notes. Now, here's the bill. I, and we're not going to read the whole bill, but the bill is only three pages long. So that's very nice. And this bill in particular, all it does is it strikes stuff out. So when you read a bill, you'll look and you'll notice that many of them, they, at the very bottom, they will have like what they'll say like coding or something like that. And then it'll show you that words that are stricken are going to be re removed. Words that are underlined are going to be additions. And in this particular case, there's only, um, there's only things that are going to be removed here. Mm -hmm. So let's start this out. It says a bill to be entitled an act relating to vaccination during public health emergencies, amending, gives the statute, removing the authority of the state health officer to order the vaccination of individuals upon declaration of a public health emergency, revising a requirement that the Department of Health adopt certain rules, providing an effective date. And so then it goes through and all it does is it has the current statute. And then it goes through and pretty much it removes the word vaccination everywhere. So, for instance, um, under one of the sections here going down, it says, and, and see, let's see what section is this here. This section is, um, let's see here, we're looking at section one and then subsection four. And under subsection four, here's what it says. Ordering an individual to be examined, tested, vaccinated, treated, isolated, or quarantined for communicable diseases that have significant morbidity or mortality and present a severe danger to public health. Individuals who are unable or unwilling to be examined, tested, vaccinated, or treated for such reasons of health or health religion or conscience may be subjected to isolation or quarantine. And then what it does is it strikes out vaccination or vaccinated. Vaccinated. So what are your thoughts? Okay, my thought is just that right there. I look at that and read it because this is what you threw on me. You told me it's what I had to go read. Yes. And so in doing that, I started looking. I go, wait a minute. Why are they only striking out vaccinations? Okay. 
Like that, like I, in all honesty, like because here's what happens: if we're just so focused on this right now, it's all we care about. There's a lot of other stuff that's written in there. Mm-hmm. There's things that when they talk about it, uh, they they can be forced you to be examined, tested, treated, isolated, or quarantined. Right. That there's all that all that stuff can still stay. Right. We're just gonna pull out vaccinations. Right. Because that's the hot topic word for right now. Right. But I look as I go. Wait, wait a minute. There's a lot of other things that are written inside of there, right. and, and they're all kind of a slippery slope. Um, the idea that they tell you that anything that poses a um, danger to public health. Right. Okay, well, if we want to travel down this road, um, when AIDS became an issue, mm-hmm. they didn't make people go around and start saying, hey, you got to do this, you got to court. That was never the case. In fact, they educated us. Right. And to understand, and they, you know, they still kind of gave a level of freedom. Right. And say, hey, you know, this is what you got to do. And and here I'm looking at, okay, well, wait a minute. why is this different? Why are we traveling down this road? And if we start allowing them to, them, you know, them, um, if we start allowing them others. to test us, and uh, like I said, pulling out, vaccinating. Right. Um, if we start allowing them to test us, treat us, isolate us, and quarantine us, mm-hmm. um, haven't we already seen? Shouldn't we be very cautious right now right. during this time? So I, I, my problem with this bill is not that – they're pulling out vaccinations. My problem with this bill is why are they only right. pulling out vaccinations? Right. And I think that it comes back to the bigger issue that we have. It fits into this still. Um, there's a lot of laws out there we don't know. Oh, yeah. There's Absolutely. a lot of times we hear about things. And I often say, you know, it's funny. The thing they bring the attention to usually means they're trying to make you look over here mm-hmm. while they're doing something else over sure, here. Sure. And so here's the thing. I wonder. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't realize this was a law like this right. until you made me go read it. Right. <laughs> and so going in and reading, I go, wait, wait a minute. It's already there. Yep. We have to understand, they're not trying to pass a law saying these things. No, the law is there. Yep. They're trying to remove vaccination out right. of it. And so I start looking, I go, what is going on? Right. See, this is the fear. And this is why I think I like that you have this portion that if nothing else, it makes you start going, wait a minute, what else right. is already law right. that we're not covering? And if so, what? When do we go in repeal laws mm-hmm. as opposed to just pulling out sections for right, right. now? Right. And so I think that that was kind of my concern in this one. That's why I said I truly focused on why they pulled just out vaccinations. This other stuff is already there, which mm-hmm. scares me a little bit because right. how far can they travel down this road? And then what I just want to add is that I, I, I'm the guy who always thinks of what's next. I'm right. always like everything I do, I'm always the what's next. Like if we're not careful, what happens if we allow this to happen? It's been huge over the past 18 months where people are not thinking right past tomorrow right y- you know so i i might have pulled something out that wasn't your point but that's no, kind of what okay that's kind of where i was camping out that's what kind of hit me a little bit it, it leads into my point okay my concern with this so first and foremost so yours is a more educated you, you got, um, we got the trivial little yeah, idiot we'll go guy with that. Totally and then go now with the that. educated I'm, guy I'm is gonna say i'm that. gonna build I'm, on I'm, your idiot foundation you are going to as a Certain notable person recently said, prove me right. Oh, shut this thing down. (laughs) (laughs) So here's my concern with it. First and foremost, I do appreciate the fact that we're removing stuff. Yes. As a rule of thumb, I like to remove stuff, not add stuff. Now, in the last episode, we actually agreed that adding uh, knives to the bill was good. So Mm -hmm. in that particular bill, that Ohio bill, they said, okay, well, we, we don't want cities to enact ordinances to prevent people right. from being able to carry certain weapons and they included knives. So in that particular case, it was an addition. In this particular case, it's a subtraction. Mm-hmm. However, I don't think it goes far enough. Right. And more importantly, I think that there's other language that kind of renders it moot anyway. Okay, it's there's, already in there? So here's what it says. Are you saying that something's already in there? No, no so oh, okay. So under, under section one, and then we go down here to part two, um, I believe it's is it part two, uh, I guess You're it's still section, section one. Two. Yeah, yeah. It's Wait it's minute, not in two. So so section one paragraph blah blah blah. Oh, okay. I I see. Okay. There, there this is like the. At, at any rate, it's like on the first page. We'll just do that. I'm having I'm having a little bit of trouble identifying it. But here here is what it says: The state health officer, upon declaration of a public health emergency, may take actions that are necessary to protect the public health. Here's the good part: such actions include. But are not, not limited, limited to, to, right? So there it is. So they've removed vaccinations, but there's still this language that says, but are not limited to. Now, that's my underline. That's not. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. But that's saying, hey, we have this. But, oh, guess what? 
Right. We can so still it's add not to it. limited. This is the bottom part. From my read. Now, uh -huh. again, I'm not a lawyer. I could be entirely wrong, but my read of this just as a layperson says, hey, you know what? They still have the door open to do vaccinations. And here's the other thing. Like, and this is kind of what you, uh, going off of what you were talking about, you were like, hey, there's all these other things in here. Mm -hmm. um, they have the, they can order an individual to be examined, tested, treated, isolated, quarantined for communicable diseases, right? So they can't, so, so, so let's just say at face value, you can't be forced to be vaccinated, even if that other language I pointed out. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's leave let's that there. Assume. Yep. What they can do is they can just say, well, are you vaccinated? If you're not, then I can we quarantine can, you. We can quarantine you. Yep. We can treat you. Now that what's treated? They're Vaccination. Coming out, they're coming out with a pill now, yep. a COVID pill mm -hmm. that is not a vaccine. That is after you get COVID. So assume so, for a moment that treated means after you've been infected, which means a vaccine isn't going to be very useful. Right. So, but the COVID pill would be. So they may not be able, to, according to this law, my read of this, they may not be able to say. You have to, we can force vaccinate you, but they might be able to say we can force we'll treat you, you. Mm -hmm. if you get COVID. We can force do a lot of these other things if you don't have so the vaccine. You're suggesting they're playing word games with us, kind of. Because I'm they're saying, "Oh, look what we're striking! This is great!" I, Everybody goes, "Yes, no vaccines!" Right. But with the people, when you go and read it, you go, "There's a lot of room." Yes, a lot of, a lot so of room to, we, to work. We, with. So we look at that and go, "It's a win for us." They get, right. And then when you really look at it, no, it's a continued. Thing right. for them. Right. Okay. I, I, I would say that anything that they uh, hear ordering an individual, that entire line should be stricken. Hey, I'm thinking strike the whole stinking thing. But I mean, I don't mind that they uh, like I don't mind if they say, hey, we're going to um, create, a, you know, we can invoke a public health emergency and some other things. I, I don't mind them saying that. It's when they start. Tell, but, telling but the, the individual what they what can did I say? do. What's next? That once we allow them to declare that emergency, right. we've seen now that they will. Right. And we've seen that they'll keep it going if they could. Correct. We are blessed to live in a state where we kind of said, no, we're not going to play that game with you right. anymore. Like, I mean, we got lucky because of the governor we have. But that, and, you know, I know. And we, he, he played along at first. Oh, yes, he did. But they finally and realized, he hey, wait a minute. And, 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 and you got to understand that. Okay. So, for example, the reason why I say this is that we – if we're in Florida, we're like, yo, whatever, dude. Mm -hmm. um, but, okay, so there's a lady in our church who's from up north. Right. Okay. And we were talking, and uh, a friend of hers just passed away who lives in New York. Right. And I'm like, well, are you going up to the – she goes, no. She goes, they still have all the crazy things. And I mean, and, and us in Florida are like, no, I'm not doing none of that stuff because right. we're, pa we're past that. Right. Okay. And, and so I look at that and I go, here's the problem. Now that we're seeing what they can and will do, and they'll extend it as long as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have, like you said, if we didn't happen to have this governor. Right. We might be just as bad as some of these other states are still locked down trying to get back to life a little bit. Right. So my fear is what's next. And if we allow them to just kind of continue down this line with this other stuff that they're still inside of there. Right. We walk into a very dangerous area because we've proven that they will extend stuff out even if you don't agree with it. Right. And then there's one last line here. Um, this is at the very end. I think this is very, um, uh, very meaningful to know. The test treatment, including vaccination, which is stricken, stricken. Mm -hmm. for communicable diseases required before employment or admission to the premises or to comply with an isolation or quarantine. So um, back that up a little bit here. Um, that follows another sentence that says any order of the state health officer given to effectuate this paragraph is immediately enforceable by law, uh, by, by a law enforcement officer. The test or treatment for communicable diseases required before employment or admission to the premises or to comply with an isolation or quarantine. So effectively, we're, even, though, even though it's taken out the vaccination, mm -hmm. and so it's saying like we can't require you to be vaccinated, we can't force you to be vaccinated. They can still force test or treatment required before employment or admission to premises. So the state health officer could effectively say, hey, there is a, um, an emergency. There's a public health emergency. And we are going to require that everybody take this, everybody that's infected, and we can require you to be tested. Right. And if you come up positive, then we can require you to take a COVID-19 pill. If you do not take the COVID-19 pill, we can force it upon you because it's still That's just, permitted. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we can also require it for employment. Right. Now, whether or not they will use it is another matter, but, but it's, it's there. there. So if they want to. See, you know what's funny? is like traveling down that road, you start going, okay, what happens when they say, you know what? The flu right. is now 
right. a health problem right. for everybody. Because this, so, this isn't limited to COVID. No, it's not. Because you know it's not, COVID's not mentioned in there at all. No, it's not. Okay. Neither is the flu. So, right. It says communicable disease. So what happens when the flu gets put into that? And now what happens when they start saying, hey, you know what? We really like the control that we had during right. COVID. Watch what we can do. We can do this for how, who knows how long right. if we just make it the flu now. Right. Because people die from the flu. Yep. In fact, many times what we notice is there'd be more flu deaths than there were COVID deaths. Right. And, and so you try to point out, so what's what's next? What's, what stops yep. them? What stops next year yep. from being very low COVID deaths and all of a sudden but a spike back. in flu? Yeah, this flu's back again. Right. So what stops them? Now, now can I add to this? I think we've had, talked about this a little bit before. I'm torn. I, I'm just kind of, I'm still kind of feeling this one out a little bit. I'm torn about whether private companies should be allowed to say, hey, in order to work here, mm-hmm. you have to have this or that or whatever. I, I, I'm torn on that one. So I, I, I don't, I, I, I know liberties go, no, they should never have a right to, but you know what? We believe in private property rights. And, well, some of them already do. Okay. And, and so I kind of look at that. Hospitals like, oh, do that already. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's already there. Already. Now, I started like I started um, asking the uh, the question of, okay, can you start saying, hey, listen, everybody who's in, you're kind of grandfathered in. We can't play this game with you. Okay, right. fine. We're not going to make sure you're vaccinated. But here on out, we want to start making sure new employees do. Yeah. And, and I kind of, I'm like, geez, you know, I, I the the libertarian in me says, I think it's their company. They have a right. Once again, it's not mandated. Because remember, we talked about this before, that if they mandate it, it doesn't make a difference whether it's this job or that job. They right. both stuck doing it. doesn't. But now right. if you say, hey, you don't have to. Right. You can choose to as a private business. Then that business can go, hey, wait a minute. Um, we want to do vaccinated people only. Right. Um, and so you can either come work here or go work over there because now they don't have to over there. Right. And I'm fine. So that part there, because it's in there. Right. And, and I kind of look at it and go, I, I'm not sure if I'm 100% sold on that one yet because I like private property rights. Right. I, I, I like the idea of government right. staying out of businesses and stuff along mm-hmm. those lines. So the very last part of this, I'm not sure about yet. The rest right. of it, scrap oh. the whole thing. Oh, but yeah. No, I, I, if I were to rewrite this, it would be all of about one paragraph. And it would, it would basically say the state is permitted to declare a state of emergency – and anything that's under the state control, so like courthouses and stuff like that, right. they could make certain mandates, mm-hmm. but they could not make any mandates on businesses or individuals. Okay. That's it. And, and that, that, that's where it would stop. It would stop there and it would only be – so like I don't know. They could say, hey, if you're not vaccinated, you can't go to the state park, right? Like I guess I would be okay with that. Not like, like okay meaning I think it would be within an appropriate – I'm trying to think of how I want to say this. Um, because somebody got watch. It, it would be within the. <laughs> it would be within the uh, scope of their authority because, when you're talking about the state now, that this disregards whether or not they should be in charge of a state park. Right. Right. Like so, setting that aside for a moment, mm-hmm. and just saying they are. Okay. So therefore, in the same way that they have authority over a courthouse, okay, they could make certain rules. Oh, so you're, okay. Okay. Right. Like they could say, when you come to this courthouse, you cannot bring your firearm in. I'm okay with that. I don't like it, but I'm okay with it right. because you know this is this is what we call state property, which doesn't really exist, but we'll go with it for now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's way different than private property. So your, yes. your church, they can't say, "Hey, in order to go to Tubbs Church, you have to be vaccinated. You can't but, carry. You can't. You." But you I can't have the have right to. as the pastor to go. You have to be or don't have to be. Correct. Like I get to make that decision Correct. based. On, so I understand what you're saying now. You're not doing it based on person. You're doing it based on location. at that point, right. you're saying if you're coming to the state park thing. So you're saying, hey, What's you can't go to state park if you don't. Authority. Exactly. Uh, but now let me ask you a question. But then I would remove a lot of scope of authority. Right. Oh, now, that. Let, but let me ask you a question real quick. And, and it kind of fits into still what we're saying because um, there are a number of remote jobs now. Mm-hmm. Okay. A lot of people, all this happened, they're never back in an office again. Right. The downside is, though, there are state employees that are still considered an employee, even though they never go near an office, they never do anything, right. and they're still forcing them to follow these guidelines. Right. So I guess maybe that's same for this topic, but it kind of says, when do we draw that line? Right. When, when do we look at it realistically and start saying, hey, wait a minute, if you have direct contact, if you, right. you know what I'm saying? I think that we have to start adding those type of things to what you're suggesting. Right. Is that if the state has the power to say, this is ours. Right. Okay. We need to understand remote well, we, also. When we start re- removing the state power, we start removing um, ideas for more power in a sense. Right. Just because, replace. Mm-hmm. Be, because effectively you you shrink the federal you, you shrink the uh, state government let's say we shrink it 
So now they're no longer running state parks. They only are running like maybe courthouses and some police and you know maybe some firefighters and in the National Guard, right? Right. And and then we slimmed even that down to the bare minimum, right? So then you have you actually have this smaller scope of authority, and then I think what happens is the population gets used to that smaller scope of authority, um, if they're wise, of course, mm-hmm. and if they understand things in the way that us two brilliant men the, 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 If you can get inside these brilliant minds, yes. Then what they do is that becomes the check and balance on further aggression. And so then when, when something comes around, they say, okay, well, we need everybody to be vaccinated. Well, first and foremost, I've removed any ability to say you have to be vaccinated to um, uh, – uh, uh, that they can that they can impose vaccination on an individual like right so all i'm saying is like hey you can declare it and then you can make some limitations okay. for entering you know but those limit like those limitations still are subject to other limitations right i think i'm sounding a little bit confusing here so there's a there, there's a hierarchy my personal sovereignty as an individual ranks the highest right they cannot they, ca- they cannot impose upon it mm-hmm. because they can't impose upon it. Even if I work for them, that, you know, I- I- anything under that is, um, is, is uh, you, you know, if I come to your house. Okay. okay. All right. I'm trying to think Try how this to explain one. this. Okay. If I come to your house, uh-huh. you can tell me it's my private property DL. Do not bring your firearm in. Right. So I would have to. Uh, I would. I would you I have would, a choice. I would have a choice, and I would agree to that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so then I would make that agreement. However, you, you. You. I mean, I guess you could say it's my private property. Don't come in if you're not vaccinated. Right. Right. But you couldn't force me to be vaccinated. If no. It's not. It's a, you know, just right. walk away, and you go right. do whatever you want to go Same do. Same thing for government. Yes. Same concept. I have certain rights. You have certain rights. The government has no rights. But you have certain rights. I have certain rights. And there's a hierarchy, and it depends on the situation. Okay. If I come to your house, then it's I your get to make the property. rules. You make I go the to rules. your house, you make, I the, make rules. the rules. So it's right. Okay, now, but there are certain let, rules that you don't get to make. You don't get to make and say, "Okay, I'm going to let you come in, but I can't. But I'm not letting you leave unless you get vaccinated." It, okay, right? Because you wouldn't have that authority because I still my right. My right supersedes inside supersedes of mine. Supersedes that particular yep. right because it's my body. Okay, so here's what I often say, and I, I think I, I did that I, better. You got much better the second give me, time. Give around me comments there. if you have um, to be like, "Deal, you screwed." That I up. think the best thing to comment there is, I think you really just need to get what Todd was saying. He made it very simple. Just why? So, uh, why? why? So, but but he, he, here's what happens. I often say that if I own a nightclub, mm-hmm. and I say, "Hey, on Friday nights, um, only people who wear blue shirts are allowed to come in." Right. Okay. You all, don't have to like that. Are coming. Right. <laughs> so you don't have to like that. You either choose to get in or get out. Now, I've I've often used that same analogy to show how God works and stuff like that, that God makes the rules. He determines. Right. He's It's his house. He owns it. Right. Okay. It's the same premise is that you want to be part of my house and what I got going on. Here's the rules. Right. Now, I'm not going to stop you from going over to there wearing your red shirt to that club. That's right. fine. Right. But for here, and and I think that we I think that we can agree on this. Right. I think libertarians can agree on this. What we're struggling with is this other stuff. The yeah. other stuff is getting added to it. The things that we kind of look at and go, wait a minute. And I and I think that once again, like the last, let's start talking. Yep. Let's start seeing what this does, and then ultimately, like you said, let's wipe out most of that bill. Yep. Let's wipe most of it out and get, get rid, rid of, of the, the they they've really kind of covered themselves. In verbiage yep. yeah. to kind of make it they can ultimately still do what they yep. want to do. So that's why you need to read these bills. You need to check them out, see what they say, what they don't say, and what may still be what may be residual in there that you don't realize. And in my particular opinion, I think that even though they have removed, and Tub agrees, even though they've removed the word vaccination, the possibility still exists mm-hmm. because there's language in there that suggests that it's not limited to. And then there are other things that they could do, like they could, they could still make you take pharmaceuticals if they so chose. Now, it may be the case that it will never happen here in Florida, but the fact is, it's there and it's possible. Mm-hmm. So, with that, we bid you adieu. adieu. Thank you for tuning in. We went with adieu. All uh, right. I'm, getting all, I'm trying to be all like, you know. He's uh, trying to cover for the bad example he right, used to Right, trying to sound smart, you know, like, this, <laughs> and this on a smart note. Uh, but yeah, thanks for listening, and we'll. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to LibertyDadPodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to Facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. 
prefer an audio format, then head on over to LibertyDad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.